Hi, it's Darnell with Way Over Recipes, and today I'm going to be cooking up a bunch of steaks in the Power Smokeless Grill XL 1500 watts version. We're going to see how this Power Smokeless Grill does cooking up a lot of steaks right now. Okay, so for this cook of steaks in the Power Smokeless Grill XL, I've got myself four large ribeye steaks. It's about four and a half pounds of meat, so each is about a little more than a pound each. I've got some steak seasoning. I always like to use the Gromates Montreal steak seasoning. And also got myself some extra virgin olive oil. I'm gonna be going way over the smoke point for the extra virgin olive oil. But this is the power smokeless grill, right? So let's see how it does. And so nothing in this video is sponsored, by the way. I'm going to power on the power smokeless grill. Going to up temperature all the way to 450 degrees Fahrenheit, its maximum cooking temperature. Let it go ahead and get to its temp. Once it is to its temp, I'm going to let it continue to run for a while just to make sure it's good and hot. Making sure I turn the fan on, never want to forget that. I've already got two cups of water down in the water pan for the grill. And so for these steaks, now I'm just going to basically cover each side of the steaks with some oil and some seasoning and so just going to pour that over here and you may also notice that i've got the i grill 2 out i'll be measuring the temperature using the i grill 2 meat probes in these uh, pieces of meat so i've got four meat probes out and i'll be tracking their temperature the entire time so that lord willing we get a perfect grill on these sticks a perfect cook we'll see if that turns out well. I've got two of these uh, steak seasoning containers because one is very low and so you know one runs out I've kind of got another as my backup my ready backup to jump right in here and continue seasoning without a break. So this seasoning is pretty good if you like um, you know as far as suggestions for seasonings, you know, just basic salt and pepper is also a great seasoning if you've never tried that on a steak. Just basic salt and pepper, but I've over time come to prefer this Montreal steak seasoning. It's just really good. And if you want, you can let your uh, meat, you know, kind of rest in the, marin well, in the seasoning for a while to help it seep in. I could have let these steaks kind of set out for a while to really come up the temp a bit more or get closer to room temp before throwing them on the grill. But these are pretty cold. But, you know, if you want to, and I've done it in other cooks, you can let them warm up to, you know, not necessarily room temp, but warm up a bit so that they're not refrigerated cold. And you can get some real juicy steaks that way. This time I'm just kind of going straight ahead from the refrigerator like this. So just get this other side coated with the same with the oil and the seasoning. All right, I've got these steaks well seasoned up. So now I'm going to take the meat probes and start getting those into each of these steaks. So. Just going to get a probe into each one of them and this is really probe number four for the one furthest to the right i've got them kind of laid out in uh, four three two one order so that i can keep track of their temperature so what you're seeing right now for 70 71 if you can see it is the temperature for the first meat probe i can cycle through to see the temperature for others if I, you know, just kind of go up here to this one, it's 43 degrees. So I'm just going to go back to the first one for now. I'm going to continue getting these meat probes into all of the meat. And I like to stick those meat probes in nice and deep so that they uh, give a really good read. Because these types of long-term temperature probes, you got to get them in. Get them in real good to get a good reading. So, I'm going to get this one in here. And I like that the iGrill 2 has four probes so that you can you know, track the meat. And 
basically most of the stuff that you see in this cook you can find in my Amazon shop in the link in the video description so anything you're, <clears throat> anything you're interested in you can find there more than likely now I'm gonna let that uh, now I'm gonna let the power smokeless grill continue to warm up and as I said once it is warm I'm gonna wait a few more minutes to make sure it's getting hot then start putting steaks on the grill all right so I've let the grill set at 450 degrees solid for about five minutes and so now I'm going to go ahead and get the lid off you should use pot holders but it's still a little cool and easy to touch at the moment when you get that handle I'm putting my steaks on we get all four on the grill here and you hear that sizzle and the surface is very non-stick I don't have any cooking spray or anything on that surface now one thing I really like is although it makes a lot of noise when you're first putting your food on with a lot of sizzle and a lot of a lot of sound and fury as soon as I put that lid on it kind of kills that excess noise a good bit so gonna let this cook for a while gonna wait until these start getting into about the maybe 125 range and then start trying to flip them over maybe 120 we'll then get to like 120 and then start flipping them but we'll let these cook for now So I'm thinking with these meat probes, I must have done some bad placement on some of them. Like this one is 103, which I feel is definitely accurate. But then like I checked some of these others, like it's saying it's 177, no way. The other one's saying 165, no way. The other one's saying 193, there's no way those are that hot. So, you know, for some reason or another, those aren't giving me an accurate read. I use these probes in other cooks, no problem, but Seems like for some reason or another they're off in this particular cook, but it seems like this one in the first steak is fairly on point accurate. So I'll just continue using this one to continue measuring temp. And although these haven't reached um, 120 yet, it's just 110, still should be a fine time to go ahead and flip them. I'm sure that the other side should have some searing by now. So I'm going to get the lid off and do some flipping. Look at that. That is a nice sear. That's a nice sear. I like that. Oh, yeah. That, that's looking good. That's looking real good. These are looking really nice. Oh, these are looking wonderful. These look real good. All right. Now, I don't know about you, but to me, that looks like some outdoor grill quality. The look of those. I mean, let me know in a comment if you think that looks like some outdoor grill quality. I definitely feel it is like outdoor grill quality. You know, some grills I've used, you grill up steaks and they've kinda, they kind of look white. You know, the meat doesn't really get a real nice Mylar reaction all over like these, but this is looking real good. Gonna let these continue cooking gonna let them go up to about 155 and get to my uh, nice medium well and then we'll stop things but we'll let these continue to cook for now all right we reached 155 so going to get the lid off of here and going to start testing some of these sticks just to see where they're at. Yeah, that one's super hot. That one is really hot. Yeah, they're all pretty hot. Yeah, this one, this one seems to be the only one that's like, um, 
I guess medium well it was kind of on the end here but these other ones cooked a lot faster so I'm just turning the power off on the heat I'm going to turn my agro 2 off as well now I'm just going to take uh, I guess I'll take the one that's really medium well here off the edge and get that one off the others I'm just going to get off on a plate over here just to kind of you know get them off the heat source I'll just let those set on the side over here all right so for this one that we are going to be taking a closer look at I'm just going to slice it down the middle and we'll just see if this one that we got a good read on is truly medium well you can of course let your meat rest for five ten minutes I know I know but uh, I want to cut on in here and so there you see a medium well steak so the only issue we had was with my uh, meat probes not giving me an accurate read but if you're doing doing an accurate read of your temperature you should be fine and so just going to get this piece here sliced off for taste test purposes let me get the camera moved and we'll taste test all right so let's taste this steak and get this off here Okay, steak turned out very good. You know, medium well came out just the way it should. And really it's not a problem that the ones that came out overdone came out, you know, well over well done because some of the folks that'll be eating these like them well anyway. And I like a well one myself even, you know, even, you know, sometimes well, sometimes medium well, but it's all good. But the bottom line is the power smokeless grill can put a real good sear on your steak. It can really cook your steak up weight. You know, as long as you're measuring a temp good, you're going to be just fine. And so this shows it can do it. There was, you know, I don't know if you want to call it steam. There was some, something emitting out of the sides. You know, I guess it could be called steam because there was water condensation that I was having to clean up from under the grill. So there was a lot of like steam, not any real emittance of real smoke. And that was using extra virgin olive oil all over them. Still came out without, you know, a bunch of smoke billowing. That's real good. Power smokeless grill represents its name well and so you'll be able to find this recipe others at my blog superwaveovenrecipes.com also check the video description and also you can always come to this youtube channel by going to waveovenrecipes.com i'm on twitter and instagram at waveovenrecipes and if you like this video please give it a thumbs up share the video with a friend leave your comments subscribe to the channel and good eating